And now, your official Tiger Bait postgame show with Mike Scarborough and Preston Guy starts now. All right, uh, welcome in LSU fans. Mike Scarborough here with Preston Guy. It wasn't pretty, but LSU got it done 34 to 31. And uh, typical LSU Arkansas game is the way Brian Kelly opened up his press conference and talked about all the three point wins that LSU's had in this series. Um, the ugly golden boot stays in Baton Rouge. Uh, I, I make the uh point that um, I think the winner of this trophy should probably uh force the other uh team to hold on to it and display <laughs> it uh, because it's so damn ugly. Uh, but either way, uh, LSU gets the win, and um, I don't know if the national television uh a viewing audience were treated to something special but uh it was kind of painful for most lsu fans but um you take them any way you can get them and uh these arkansas games i remember back in the 90s lsu would play kentucky all the time and those games were consistently tough ugly football games um this one i think it felt like it was going to be over in about an hour and a half or it would have been over an hour and a half it wasn't for uh, TV commercials because Arkansas was running the ball and running clock. Uh, time of possession was way out of whack in the first half. LSU writes it in the second, and uh, a Ramos uh, field goal ends it. And uh, we'll go through all that. But uh, Preston, give us your thoughts. Well, for me, the biggest takeaway was it was the curious case of Jekyll and Jaden tonight because Jaden Daniels opened up 7 for 14 for 70 yards with an interception. And as bad as that sounds, it looked worse. Jaden opened up the game. It was his worst game as an LSU Tiger to open the game up, missing open receivers, under throwing deep open receivers. Uh just just a, a terrible start to the game. But then I, I saw something special in Jaden. It, it's actually kind of a rare occurrence that you see a, a quarterback respond to struggling so mightily and bounce back so strong. What did he do? How did he respond to that slow start? How about 13 of 15 for 250 yards and four touchdowns with no interceptions, no turnovers, and leading the game-winning drive to seal an SEC victory? That response is notable. It, it is it is absolutely more impressive than the stat line itself. Um it's one of those things where just the mental game of, of being down that much, it's just rare to see guys have such a make such a 180 in the middle of a game. Brian Kelly talked about it post game and he said it was a rhythm issue, which kind of looked right because he was making throws off balance and whatnot. Now, of course, in the back half, part of that 13 to 15 is. <laughs> One of the most hilariously ugly football plays I've ever seen. The the big long fifty nine yard touchdown to Brian Thomas, who had a whale of a game, by the way. But on this yeah, we, play, uh, we, we asked Brian about that uh, in the post game. We, we've got that interview up on the YouTube channel, but uh, uh, he kind of had a smile on that one when he was talking <laughs> about it. It was a comedy of errors. First off, it's a free play. Arkansas goes off sides. Brian Thomas opened by six or seven yards. I didn't look at the film again. It's just, just eyeballing off of memory. Jaden Daniels underthrows him, but what I can only assume is about 12 yards. But it's okay. It's a free play. Like, you get a pass for making a, a, an awful throw. Um, the DBs cannot locate the ball. They're looking like a circus. Brian, Brian Thomas comes back to the ball, drops it. It's back up in the air. The DBs still can't find him or the ball. And he catches it on the bounce and then takes it opposite direction, makes a circle and just scampers into the end zone. Hilarious play. I mean, it really looked like a circus on that play, but kudos to Jaden and the offensive line for uh, taking advantage of the free play. Yeah. Um, guys, uh, as always uh, hit the like button, please share it out. I know we got a late start tonight and, uh, I might go on a little rant right here as I explain why we were late. Um, uh, and Preston nailed it uh, when I said, man, why, I was shocked when I came back to up to the press box and Preston was still there. Well, a lot of, a lot of sports writers will kind of write uh, their story during the game. And uh, when it ends the way it did tonight, 
uh, everything gets started late or gets scrapped because it's you've you you yeah. pretty much got to rewrite everything uh, or or what you thought how it was going to play out. But um, anyways, uh, normally I will take River Road. I'll take a left off of Skip Burtman Drive and take River Road towards LaBerge. And tonight, and it seems like it's multiple times a year. But later, I found out that uh, there was a uh, a wreck on Lee. But uh, everybody got stuck in bad traffic. It sounds like again tonight. It seems like there's a couple of these every football season. So they send me down River Road towards downtown, and I'm at each little intersection where I think I could take a right and get to Nicholson. Uh, they're blocked off. So I finally rolled down my window and I asked the police officer, "You know what the heck's going on? Why are y'all doing this?" Normally. I take a left on the river road and he goes, no, you've never done that. I said, excuse me. I said, I did it last week, two weeks ago. I do it every game. No, you don't. I've been sitting here for 25 years. And I'm like, and I finally just rolled my window up and I'm like, I'm not going to argue with this. I mean, he's a police officer. You got to respect your police officer, but no, sir. I've been doing this for 25 plus years. And I know the route I get home from an LSU football game every every week and uh i go up skip burtman drive and take a left on river road so i got that off my chest well there you go do you feel better not really (laughs) okay (laughs) all right uh music says nuss bus to bama i don't know what that means no he thinks Um, he's gonna transfer because he's not playing yeah. yeah no it's not happening he's gonna be the guy next year uh, yeah, well, and I will say that? this: had uh, that rhythm issue with Jaden Daniels had that started again in the second half, uh, mm-hmm. we've been all for putting Nussmeier in. Well, the thing uh, is, is is about Jaden Daniels and the the short leash he's on. It's not because of who he is as a quarterback or anything. You just have to understand in ball games that are tight where he's struggling in, you have a very one of the best backups, if not the best backup in the country. So it's not a jab on Jaden. It is more of a nod to Garrett. Nussmeier. I'm not going to go as far as this is, is your, ex, ex, uh, you're saying that he's the best backup in the country. Right? No, arguably. Now I don't actually know who is, but I have seen a few lists where he's the top rated, probably one of the most experienced backups in the country, if nothing else. Yeah. But, um, uh, and I'm look, I'm a pro pro, uh, Jane Daniels guy, but you know, if things would have progressed and and been the same in the second half as the way the first, yeah. Um, and if you got down a couple of scores, that you probably would have going to need to make a change. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. If he kept on um, being that brother, no doubt about it. Kenny Haynes, the receivers was, were playing a great game. I mean, especially during the struggle, they were wide open downfield. Go ahead with Kenny Haynes, though. Yeah, he says it was an enjoyable game for the most part. Bad defense, absolutely atrocious, and um, I don't know that anybody. I mean, I can go back and listen to the post game again. I'm back there in, in the locker room, um, but I don't know that anybody really questioned uh, Brian Kelly on how bad that defensive backfield was and the busted coverages. And um, yeah. I will say this though: it, it wasn't until the second half that that uh, Wingo had any stats to mention. Um, in fact, let me pull it up right now. Um, Wingo had four tackles, two solo. Save he had Jones nothing. He had four. nothing in uh, uh that, that, that charted at all in the first half, and and a little bit of the second, and then he turned it on and, and had a respectable night. Um, but number zero, uh, Mason Smith, he was the same way. Uh, yep. He ended up with two total tackles, one solo. Um, Deshaun Womack and. Harold Perkins with nice sacks tonight, though. Uh, now, I will say this. Uh, Wingo was getting doubled. Um, but, man, uh, that, that was uh, – to see both those guys have nothing in the stat line of uh, it all for an entire half of work was, was shocking to me. And it, it also pointed uh, about uh, the issues they were having uh, with Jefferson all night long. Um, so – so Kenny Haynes is there, and uh, I tell you what, let's go ahead and, and kick things off. Uh, and uh, with and let, let's hear from from Kenny. 
Kenny Haynes is a proud 1989 graduate of LSU Law School with a passion for justice. Kenny stands out as the only lawyer in the state, board certified in both appellate practice and family law. Drawing from 34 years of trial experience, Kenny has navigated the most complex aspects of real people's lives. If you need help in Northwest Louisiana with a family issue, legal issue, or a highly skilled trial attorney, call Kenny, 318-222-2100. And speaking of winning, Kenny would like to recognize our 20 2023 national champions and congratulate coaches Kim Mulkey and Jay Johnson. Go Tigers! And of course, Kenny is the unofficial official lawyer of TigerBait.com, and he reserves the right to think most clearly for a paying client. And uh, we thank Kenny for uh, being one of our sponsors of our post game every year. And um, all right, thanks again, Kenny. Okay, um, Cameron Rogers, secondary didn't look too hot. No, they did not. Uh, fire three, four, four, nine. LSU wins by three. Greg Brooks liked that number. Um, I will say this about Greg Brooks. There's a lot of stuff that's out there that I've been picking up a little bit. It does seem, look, he, he's got uh, a ways to go after the medical procedure. Um, but I did get some positive news today, to, and um, and and uh, uh, it's uh, but it's one of those deals where I don't have a a, a real handle on it. But things do seem like um, uh, that they that they are positive, and and uh, still keep him in your prayers. And um, but uh, it does seem like uh, what they pulled out of there, um, the tumor and everything that, uh, that there's some positive news that uh, we might be getting soon on that. Uh, fire three, four, four, nine, hit the like button, everyone. Absolutely. Um, Clay Rivers, bright side, finally a running back, almost doubling Jaden Daniels yards on the ground. Logan Diggs, uh, he is your guy. Um, yeah, you know, we, and when I say Logan Diggs is the guy, he's your number one running back. Obviously everybody, we're all excited about uh, what Caleb Jackson might be, uh, in the future. Um, but, you know, you had that one series in the second half that you had two running plays with uh, John Emery, and I and I and I just got to believe the way from what I've seen of Logan Diggs the last two weeks. I think one of those runs he would have put that in the end zone. Um, Logan Diggs is the guy. And I, look, I, by saying this, I'm not calling out Frank Wilson. Frank Wilson's got a real problem. He's got eight running backs. Um, you've got guys who are grinding and putting in the work and going to practice every day and working hard. And he wants to give these guys opportunities. John Emery had to fight back in the classroom, get eligible, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, guys earn playing time, uh, but it gets to a point now where you start to see who, which way your bread is buttered. And Logan Diggs is that guy for you. Definitely. He hit the hole with conviction tonight, and he's the complete back. He can block. He knows his assignments. He knows how to play the game. He knows how to look for an opening. Uh, he's got that complete part of his ball game that you're hoping to get Caleb Jackson caught up to speed. He did flash some good plays tonight, running hard tonight, uh, two yards for 12 yards, uh, 12 two carries for 12 yards for Caleb Jackson. But, you know, Josh Williams had his big run for 41 yards where he took care and of that business. That was nice. But but watching that, I couldn't help but think, as good of a run as that is and as reliable as Josh Williams is, I really felt like Diggs and Jackson take that run to the house because it was a wide-open hole where you only had a safety to beat, and, of course, the safety did get him. But great run. Nonetheless, Josh Williams is a back you want in this rotation and on the field. He also followed that up with an incredible block on a uh, big blitz, of course, he took care of business, but Jaden Daniels did take a sack on that play eventually because they just blitzed the house and they couldn't get it down. But love what you saw out of Josh Williams there. I didn't get to hear uh, any of uh, Sam Pittman's post game. I'm going to go back and listen to that. And, um, you know, they've got to be pretty sick. Uh, this, was a, this was a game that they could have had uh, after losing the BYU at home last week. Um, I didn't see the final of the Kansas BYU game, but Kansas was taking care of business. And so, um, but yeah, uh, Arkansas comes out with the number three on their helmet. We see Dwight McLaughlin out there, former LSU Tiger gets a pick on Jaden Daniels in the first half. Um, kind of, uh, 
unique seeing some former LSU Tigers on that Arkansas roster. And um, of course, uh, LSU's got some had had some Arkansas kids, including Greg Brooks. But um, class act by them putting number three on their helmets. Um, Carmen Allen, I accept that I can't judge LSU based on the Arkansas game. LSU wasn't perfect, but kudos to Arkansas, especially KJ. Um, Played a hell of a game. Is, he is. I mean, he he's a he's a heck of a quarterback, and um, uh. I don't know what uh, where they can top out at at Arkansas with win, win, wins and losses, but um, if they play like they did tonight, I think they're going to get their share. They definitely played better. They, against they can beat Mississippi State. They can beat Auburn. Um, I mean, I have to go back and look at the rest of their schedule, but um, well, I think they play a and next weekend at 11 a.m. in Dallas. Yeah. Is that right? So, uh, um, I, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but that, that sounds about right. It's about that time of year. That's right. Um, and uh, Max Johnson will get the start. Um, Connor Wegman, it looks like he's got a high ankle sprain, but I think we'll find out for sure tomorrow. Uh, but So he's going to be out for some time, so it's going to be Max Johnson. Um, Spencer Prejean, what's the answer for the defense of backfield the rest of the way? I have an answer to this. Get pressure on the quarterback. <laughs> Now, when I say that, they pressured the quarterback tonight. They they got after him. And, and look, they did get, let's see how many sacks they got. I think it was four sacks. Yeah, four sacks, right? But a lot of times you, you got after him and he rolled out and still found a man open downfield. I swear, Luke has. It felt like he was open all game long. And every time the coverage would break down, they're just like, ah, we don't have to cover Luke. Uh, you got to get the quarterback down. Because these defenders, they cannot, they cannot cover for four more seconds. And I don't think there is an easy, you know, patch solution. Even if you get Greg Brooks back miraculously, there, there's no quick, you know, fix for this defensive backfield being able to cover better. Um, you know, you can kind of hide some weaknesses, but you better get that front seven after the quarterback because, whew, it looked rough tonight. Um. Dwayne D, I love Andre. Sam's flying around, absolutely, but he has to break down and wrap up. Great there were two new pair of drawers for the ones he lost, getting juked on second, uh, <laughs> third, and long conversions. Look, uh, media that are working the locker room will head down from the press box at about six or seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. So I did not see the controversial play that uh, BK says he's going to send in Monday morning to the SEC office where they got hit with a uh, um, a personal foul, uh, what do you call it, roughing the passer, Preston? Um, Yeah, which I looked at the call. You said it was a bad call. I I talked to another media guy and said it was questionable, but the LSU – who who was the LSU player that did it? I didn't even see it. It was Harold Perkins, yeah. And he didn't lead with the head. It wasn't helmet to helmet. It was a hard hit, but it was right after he threw the ball. Like, what are you supposed to do? Like, t- you know, another media guy said it wasn't necessary that he could have pulled up and and it could have went either way, but he could have he did need to do what he did to get the flag. Well, you say that, but then in another world, there's a world I gotta where he see pump it. fakes and and takes it and jukes you. You know, I, I think. There was a questionable call at best, in my opinion. And uh, earlier, what was that, uh, in the first half, where they ruled a uh, incomplete pass? His arm had not started going forward yet. That was a fumble. The touchdown you're talking there. about? That oh, was, no, K.J. Yeah, that, Jefferson. Yeah. yeah, and look, they were – That the drive ended up in, in, in being an Arkansas touchdown. A bunch of the media guys came and huddled right behind me, really disgruntled at that one because LSU's defense didn't play the ball. They said, did the whistle – Call it dead immediately. I didn't hear yeah, a they whistle. Did. They they called okay. it dead. Okay. Well, then you know. Even so, you know. First off, refs, you got to let the play play. If you're not 100 percent certain, let the play play. But uh, I mean, even so, go 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 make an effort to grab that fumble. Make it make it look like when you do the replay, like well, LSU clearly got the ball because they were right there. They were right there and did not grab it. So a little bit of discipline on that. But yes, LSU got shafted. Dwayne, I love your comment here. Andre Sam is flying all over the field, but sometimes he's flying a little too much. 
and he's a little too aggressive for the ball. I saw early on in the game, he made an incredible line of scrimmage tackle on, I guess, a tight end, a receiver, whatever, and just knocked him flat on his butt. And I said, good, that's what I've been looking for, Mike, because Andre Sam has been needing to work on his tackling. About two or three plays later, same thing, didn't break down, didn't chop his feet, didn't make the tackle, flew right past the uh, the the receiver. He does need to work on being Every a little more calm. Had issues tonight. Zion Alexander had his problems. Denver Harris had his problems. Um, well, specifically with major, tackling. The safeties have struggled with tackling all year long. Major Burns uh, was, was hit or miss. Um, I'm yeah. going to go back and watch it tomorrow, of course. And Brian Lazaro uh, put out his report card Monday morning. Uh, I can't imagine the uh, defensive backfield getting higher than a D. Um, Rough night for the DBs. Absolutely. Um, I like this one. Brock Email. Why the hell aren't they playing Womack more? He looked good. He looks great. He, sack. he looks real happy coming off the field, heading into the locker room this evening too. Um, I yep. think he's going to, I think he's going to get more and more opportunities going forward. Uh, uh, I'll say this about the young man though. Great sack. Helmet came off, continued to play hard, high motor, love what I saw. You can't celebrate that long. I'm not an old get off your lawn type guy. No, I don't that, care. That was that was I don't care. close. He, he he's lucky he didn't get uh, a flag. But right don't get the 15 yarder. That's what I care about. And he was close. He he was taking it a little too far, but I, I'm all for celebrating and all that good stuff. I'm not the kind of guy who gets offended about guys showboating. Todd Davis, horrible call by the refs against Perkins. I'm with um, you, man. Michael Johnson, it's never about your superstars, your role players, your freshman, first-year guys, in which they continue to get better. Um, I think there's a lot of guys here, but, you know, it's – it's you know, you go from one week to the next. LSU lays the wood to Mississippi State last week. You perform the way you did tonight against Arkansas at home, and you're kind of like, okay, well, what is this team? How far are they going to go? Uh, what – what what is the the ceiling of this football team? And it's so hard to judge. It really is because, I mean, you look around uh, the the West right now. Uh, you know, Alabama looks better this week, but they're still not a, a, a typical Alabama team. You know, A uh, and M uh, Auburn only had two hundred yards of total offense against Texas A and M today. Uh, they're feeling pretty good about their chances in, in College Station of possibly winning the West. I mean, the, the SEC West is absolutely wide open. Uh, I, you know, I tend to think it's uh, LSU, Alabama, uh, Texas A&M. Uh, those are your three teams. But um, uh, I, I, still don't, I still don't know, because of LSU's defensive backfield um, and sometimes uh, the inability to get pressure on the quarterback, and get get that defense off the field. What what the ceiling is for this LSU team? Now, if, if Jay Daniels is going to perform the way he did against Mississippi State, and they're basically scoring on every offensive right. series, uh, you can get away with it. But um, if he's going to struggle and and have rhythm issues, quote unquote, uh, then then you have to recalibrate uh, what your expectations are for this football team. I think. Yeah, if you get more of the Jekyll and less of the Jaden, you're going to have troubles. Your first three drives, punt, interception, punt, and then you went on to score. Field goal, touchdown, 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 and, of course, the game-winner field goal. So, six of six Tyler Ayes, after that. Tyler Ayes and uh, he's with us a lot. Uh, one of our good commenters says, uh, Whit, Whit Weeks will be a stud in the years yeah. to come for LSU linebacker room. Kid is a dog. I love him, too. I'm with Tyler on that one. Um, Look, even when Omar Spates gets back and healthy – uh, I, I was telling Mike before the game, now that I hear he's having a hip flexor, I'm wondering if that's a camp injury that's just been lingering because he looked he looked slow uh, in his first couple games, particularly the grambling game. He looked pretty slow, and I'm wondering if he was banged up. But, man, how do you keep Whit, Wilkes, Whit Weeks off the field? He's been an absolute, like you said, a stud. He is exactly what you want in the middle of your defense. All right, let's pay a few bills. Uh, let's. Uh, I'm going to go to um, Drip IV, guys. You all know about it. Uh, it, it you, you probably know somebody that's out there using semaglutide uh, to lose weight. It, it is absolutely working. I made a joke the other night that there's a couple of media guys that are the skinniest they've ever been. I saw another media guy, and I know that there he's 
he's doing semaglutide. I can just, without asking him, it, it, it's obvious. And uh, I've got multiple BFFs. They're going to drip IV, and uh, you cannot beat them. So if you've been struggling to lose weight, maybe you've had, uh, have heard of weight loss injections from a friend or family member. This is your sign to check. This is your sign to check it out. Drip IV offers medically assisted weight loss with semaglutide at both their Baton Rouge and Lafayette locations. Call them to book your consultation. They would love to speak with you. Call them at 225-256-3634, and they're open on weekends now, 8 to 4 Monday through Friday, and they're open till 1 p.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. So if you're hungover and you're not feeling good tomorrow, go there and get a drip, uh, an an IV drip, uh, and you'll be feeling great in no time, and go get a nice brunch afterwards. And, of course, uh, right there uh, on Perkins Crossing, corner of Perkins and Essen, super convenient stop. They always welcome walk-ins. And um, uh, right next to uh, Sushiyama and Iverstein and Perkins Crossing, uh, great place and um, great staff. And um, I'm telling you guys, that semaglutide, uh, if you got a problem losing weight, they will they will get it off you of, of, of you. In-clinic injections for $100 a week. If you can give them to yourself, it's 85 you want to go ahead and uh, do a uh, little Spectre? Yeah, 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 sure. Let's talk about Spectre Sports Art. Let me get you a little uh, smaller here. I'm going to pull you off and put mine big. Um, as you can see behind me, guys, there's a great piece of artwork. If I can remember which one to make it big. That's the Dylan Cruz 7 piece, y'all. And if it, 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 the closer you zoom into it, the more you're going to notice the details, guys. Spectre Sports Art. It is guaranteed to catch the eyes of anybody who comes and visits your home. And the attention, the detail is guaranteed to keep their attention. As you look at this, you notice behind there's details like the puzzle piece on the sleeve that represents his cruise cruise work he does where he brings kids with disabilities to the ball game. There's the fireworks from the championship celebration. His cleats are golden representing his golden spikes award that he brought home. And guys, He's added to the collection with that with plenty of classics. You might remember the Smoke and Joe piece from 2020 that you can see behind Mike there. That's easily his most popular. He's got plenty of these. He's got a Tommy Tanks one. He's got a Drew Brees one. And it's all in the landing page, which we put in the description of this video, the Bayou collection. So go. You lost your audio, Preston. Mm-mm. no audio you know what i touched the manual mute button that's actually pretty funny go. i was like man i, I see you all anyways guys the coolest part about this artwork from specter uh dylan cruz his family purchased this piece purchased the original it's hanging in their family room same thing with the joe burrow piece his parents bought it it's in their living room so you get to have the same artwork that the athletes themselves have purchased and use so y'all go check it out the link is in the description of this video spectersportsart.com go look for the bayou collection and make sure to use the promo code tigerbait10 not only do you get 10 percent off your purchase but you're letting our sponsors know that their sponsorship dollars are going to a good cause supporting them with tigerbait.com thank y'all and Mike, back to you. All right, uh, Dwayne D. Bama's defense looked pretty good, but their offense is hot dog water. <laughs> they had two point nine yards per carry and five point yards per play. Um, I'm sticking with. Uh, I know I'm sound like a broken record, but I'm sticking with my prediction that LSU beats Alabama and Tuscaloosa, uh, thus being uh, LSU beating Bama two years in a row. So, um, so let me talk about that that real quick with the Bama LSU. The, to beat LSU, you have to have a capable quarterback to expose the defensive backs, and I don't see Bama having that currently. Yeah, Jordan Jefferson was a beast along with Weeks, and uh, Dwayne D says, "Yeah, Jefferson definitely needs more playing time. He's a handful." Um, I want to go back and watch. Um, Josh Forbes. Hey, Mike and Preston. Glad to have you with us, Josh. Appreciate and, you, man. Um, absolutely. Um, Josh is one of our early fans. He's been with the show since we first started doing this, man. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, 
509 total yards for LSU, 426 for, for Arkansas. And um, there you go. Uh, passing yards, 320 to 289. Uh, I'm looking, okay. Um, quarterback rating daniels had a 200.3 and and yeah kj jefferson with a 165 um think uh, about this real quick the two interceptions um yeah for for jefferson Jefferson. although one was good play by andre sam the other one was the the final play hail mary the the final play oh by the Um, way we got to talk about that clock meltdown at the end were were you able to see any of it. it Okay, so Mike, I think I was, was down on the. I was actually in the back down of the on the zone, field. Uh, it's hard, it, but go ahead. LSU has the ball on two or three yard line. First down. It's going to be a chip shot field goal, right? You know they they had two timeouts and they decided to blow the timeouts after runs before third down. So you get to third down, you got eleven seconds left in the game, right? Instead of just waiting to third down to call that, wait until the clock goes down to, you know, six, seven, whatever seconds, right? Instead of just taking a knee and giving yourself the opportunity to milk the rest of the clock off, they called timeout the play before. They they waited for it to to, uh, go down. So what does that do for you? Well, now it's third down, 11 seconds. Quarterback has to step up, and they have a design play for him to launch it out of the back of the end zone. That's scary because instead of just having a free field goal where you kick it and take the lead, your quarterback can take a sack. You can get hit while he's throwing and throw an interception. A lot of things can go wrong, and he only takes three seconds of the 11 off the clock. So now you're down to fourth down, and you've got eight seconds. Of course, you kick the chip shot field goal. But then they get a Hail Mary attempt when mathematically you had an opportunity to get the ball down there, take a knee, put it in the middle of the field, wait for the clock to hit five seconds or whatever, take a timeout, take a shot. They don't get a chance to respond. It is shocking to me, utterly shocking to me that LSU does not have a devoted clock management Like just a clock manager, right? Who within two minutes of the halftime, he's standing right next to Brian Kelly and he's calculated every possible scenario ahead of time. All season long, all off season, all during the week. He just memorizes what to do in every end of game, end of half scenario. And he is right in his ear. Coach, you need to do this. This is how you handle this. I mean, pay him 1% of what you're paying Brian Kelly. He gets $10 million a year, and you can't find a guy to get it. Look, we've all survived the Les Miles era where these are situations where you lose the game, but that's still not ideal to, to give them a chance because what you did is you took those defensive backs who couldn't cover a cold this game, gave up 289 yards, right? And you put it in their hands. You you put it in the DB's hands to seal the game. And you really shouldn't have given them that chance. But ultimately, you know, you give Brian Kelly his C minus for for clock management. You get the W. You move on. At least it's not like Ole Miss in 2009 where, where you had the game and you just couldn't even get the field goal off. All right, ran over, guys. Um, yeah. Um. Let's see. American Patriot. The clock manager reminded me of Les Miles. That was Ooh. ridiculous. Yeah, there was a lot of media talking about that, and, and I think you're probably going to get a few questions Monday um, about it. Um, well, you know what Brian said about that, right? <laughs> Remember, he, he came to us, and he was like, you know, I talked to some old buddies a long time ago, and they say the reason coaches are so bad at these scenarios is because they don't bet on games. They don't, they're not in the scenarios where they're working it through in their head. And I thought that was a, a funny comment. In general, coaches probably do watch less live football games and watch it pre recorded. But, you know, if that's the case, just hire Bama's baseball coach and, and you'll be good to go there, Brian. Yeah. Um, Jeremy Franks, I can see two, uh, a two loss team in the playoff. Man, I, I look, what are we, what was this, week four? Yeah. Week four of the college football season. Yeah. You know, it, it's not like that there's somebody that can be mid towards the middle at the end of the year is playing outstanding <clears throat> football and is clearly 
the juggernaut of college football, but I don't, I have not seen anybody yet that isn't beatable. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, there there is a lot of teams with question marks. Um, if Georgia, I still think someone who's mediocre to bad in the SEC is going to sneak up and get Georgia. I don't see Georgia going undefeated. I if LSU wrong. plays Georgia right now, the teams that play in the way they are, do you think LSU stands a chance? Um, I wouldn't want to do it right now if I was LSU. Oh, but yeah? I think as the, as the year goes on, if they progress and some of these newcomers start to get their footing, I think LSU is going to be one of those teams that's going to be more dangerous towards the end of the year. Um, you know, or have a shot to be if they don't have a, a bunch of injuries. But uh, yeah, Ohio State uh, beats Notre Dame. Uh, I admittedly have not watched a lot of Michigan. Um, I haven't seen them at all. In fact, I've only seen some highlights. So, right. Um, but it's funny days like today. There's so many good football games on. It is hard when you're covering the game from the press box to watch all these games around the country and, and actually get a good diagnosis of what's going on. I'll tell you what, if LSU has trouble covering Luke has for Arkansas, I don't want to know what they'll have trouble with Brock Bowers. Yeah, they, they, they've, uh, I think it starts up front. Um, Look, K.J. Jefferson is a different uh, guy, man. Like uh, Brian Kelly said, he's 250-plus pounds. He's hard to bring down. Um, that might be something that needs to be charted tomorrow when re-watching that football game is how many times they got a hand on him. Well, you're not going to take that kid down with, with just right. with an arm. Um, and he can move. So – and he's a veteran. He plays well. You know, he knows how to throw defenders off with his moves and his throws. He's he he was good tonight. And we we kind of I kind of people asked me if Arkansas were to creep in close to this game, what would where would they get in? I was like, well, KJ Jefferson. I didn't think LSU stud. was going to cover tonight. I didn't have LSU cover. I didn't think LSU was going to cover, but I I thought LSU was going to win more handily than they did. Um, if they had just not, I mean, first off. If Harold Perkins isn't called for that bogus call, they win by about the margin I expect them to win by, by about 10 to 14 points. Uh, 18 points? Vegas, what are you doing, man? I mean, this is an SEC football team. Uh, you should not. You, there's no way any team in the SEC I, West I, should I, be laying three think, scores. I think Arkansas, Arkansas coming off that brutal loss to BYU at home, mm -hmm. them going on the road was probably the best thing for their program. The right. best thing those kids to able to be able to focus. You can actually focus better going on the road sometimes. Well, it's like Nick Saban says. Everybody, everybody sees a team get an embarrassing loss and they write them off. Well, they stink. We're going to win by a hundred points now. Well, the reality is is that that's a uh, an SEC team with a highly paid coach and lots of pride, lots of talented players that will play in the NFL, and they're pissed off. They want they want to win big now. So. Uh, that's the reality of the situation is they typically come back and perform well. Just like Troy, LSU lost to Troy in 2017. Next week they played Florida and, and beat them in the swamp. You know, these teams have some pride. They, they want to come back and play better, and they're capable of doing it. Guys, if you're enjoying the show, please hit that like button for us and um, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell if, uh, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet. Uh, Clay Rivers, Brian Thomas, and Malik Neighbors looking good and will only get better as the season progresses. Uh, Brian Thomas was given the game ball, ball according to uh, Brian Kelly in the post game, and uh, I mean, look at his stat line. Um, uh, both he and uh, Malik Neighbors with big nights: 130 yards for for Neighbors, 133 for Thomas, and um, Brian Thomas averaging almost 27 yards of reception. Um, oh yeah. By the way, really, 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 really good nights. And I, but I really, I do like that stat line for Logan Diggs, where he was almost right at the hundred yard mark, and uh, we, he was averaging six point nine yards per carry. That Malik nice. Neighbors and Brian Thomas are the second receiving duo in LSU history to both put up a hundred thirty yard game. Can you name the other? I think you'll get it on the first guess. Say it again. The second duo in LSU history, 
receiving duo to have a 130 yard game in the same game. Can you name the other? I don't think Jeff you need Joseph two guesses. Jamar Chase. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was Chase and Jefferson. They did it multiple times. Um, that Super trivia Bowl question versus Clemson flashbacks. That's the one where um, that kicker who was so darn good. I think what was his name? An- not Anders Carlson, right? Anyways, he, he, I think he kicks for the Raiders to this day. Yeah, he's just money, man. Hit that 53-yarder. But I'm trying to think about what what clock management in that game went wrong. I don't know, man. That, that was 2000, December 31st, 2012. It's hard to imagine. So, Dwayne D., neither Notre Dame or, or, or Ohio State looked good. So, it was, you know, when we went into the locker room, and, of course, once we get in the locker room, uh, one of the media guys had it playing on his cell phone. But as soon as you go in that locker room, cell service went out. And Ohio State was losing 14 to 10. And the last we saw, they were maybe about at midfield. And then we find out that Ohio State had won. (laughs) Um, And then so I'm messaging my Ohio State guy and congratulating him and actually thanking him because I was, as you guys know who watch our shows, we've had a bunch (laughs) of Irish fans in here. So. Uh, was pulling for the Buckeyes, and um, he said, well, not so fast. So evidently he was in review when I texted him. He's in the press box at the game. And uh, he goes, now it's final. And so, <laughs> but uh, yeah. See, um, I told my boss the reason the story was late tonight is because, you know, last second field goal, results change. I got to pre-write, then rewrite. Okay, unofficially, that game might have slowed down the story a little bit. I don't know. Maybe it was 50 seconds left and they were pushing the ball downfield. And I said, Hey guys, watch this on my laptop, but great game, man. He pushed it. You know, what's hilarious is uh, Notre Dame as well coached as they are since Brian Kelly left. They had 10 men on the field for two straight plays at the end of the game, 10 men, but the, the touchdown they scored was off the left end. They, the, the, the left defensive end was who was missing. And that's right where they scored the touchdown. So um, I, I guess maybe the coaching issues in South Bend weren't just on Brian Kelly after all. Yeah. Auburn did look bad, Josh. Um, Andre Trahan, I was surprised our defensive line got pushed around so much. Um, like I said, uh, Wingo and, and, and Mason Smith had no stats uh, at all at halftime. They finished with uh, Wingo with four, I believe, and, and and Mason with two in the second half. And he says Mason isn't 100% for sure. Um, they got to get Anderson the game somehow. Well, I like to see uh, Aaron Anderson. I like to see Aaron Anderson get some more, but look, man, it's, it's kind of one of them deals. Like, man, if Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors going to keep doing what they're doing, um, I don't know that uh, – Mason uh, Taylor is uh, is at one hundred percent, or really starting to feel his oats yet. Um, but uh, he he certainly it looked like he had, had a uh, he he's on his way. He he, he had some nice grabs tonight. Um, and uh, American Patriots said Mason's just out of shape, definitely out of shape. Yeah, needs to work on. I gotta we'll gotta get that rust off, man. And that only comes with reps. Uh, I'll say this, guys, keep an eye out. As teams start to adjust to Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas, watch out for Chris Hilton, who's getting on the field a lot more. He did not have a catch tonight, but there was a few spots where I saw pre-snap like, oh, he's got it, and then they they adjusted coverage over to him. Just saying he's a serious deep ball threat. As those two start to you know take up double teams and whatnot, Watch for Chris Hilton. I wouldn't be surprised. And I would like to see Aaron Anderson, but he's just not going to be the deep threat that that Chris Hilton is. I have one more read, and uh, it's my good friend Tim DeSells and his great company, Koala Insulation. The team at Koala Insulation of Baton Rouge are your residential and commercial energy efficiency experts. The approaches Koala provides not only to help you reduce energy bills and maintain a more comfortable living environment, but can also help reduce airborne allergens, water condensation issues, wear and tear on your HVAC system, and even lengthen the life of your roof shingles. The Koala team provides existing homeowners with a doctor's diagnosis of your home's energy efficiency 
and can offer several strategies to help you stay more comfortable and save money on your energy bills all year long. Kowalt has the capacity to tackle large spray foam projects and new home construction while being available to help everyday homeowners get some relief from South Louisiana's extreme weather. As an added bonus, most of Koala's projects qualify for federal income tax credits. Give Koala a call today, 225-457-1001, to schedule your free energy efficiency assessment and tell them, please tell them, that you heard about them right here on TigerBait.com, and you're going to get 7% off on your project. Fantastic people uh, over at Koala. Tim DeSells and his team are grade A, and um, again, tell them you heard about them on TigerBait. Okay, um, there was one up here uh, that I wanted to bring back. Dwayne says nobody form tackles anymore. Wrap the legs. Listen, one percent do it. It blows my mind. Uh, that's uh, all across college football. I mean, you see it all day, all yeah. night. Um, you know, everybody who stayed up and watched Colorado, Colorado State last week. It's like it's like flag football. I mean, um, it's bad. Well, and there's a couple factors that go into it. Number one, the NCAA limits your amount of time to practice. Number two, coaches are more hesitant you know, with player safety and whatnot. They don't want guys to get hurt in practice. They don't practice live tackling quite as much. It's a lot of, okay, wrap them up or thud tackling. Uh, and, of course, thirdly, players are afraid to get penalties tonight because, we, you know, in the modern game of football, if you hit someone hard enough or make a good enough tackle – you're you're 50 50 to draw a penalty just based on it catching the ref's eye uh re what the rule book actually says be damned in those situations they saw a hard hit flag comes out so it's a combination of things and i don't see that trend reversing anytime soon but lsu needs to work on it a lot of their issues are a little bit like for andre sam and the safeties they're coming too hard downhill trying to you know take someone's head off uh chop your feet don't do the sexy thing. Just make the tackle. American Patriot with a super chat. Thank you, American Patriot. Uh, you know, talk about one of our our great guys that uh, is with us and has been with us from the very beginning. It's American Patriot. Uh, why is our D line so far off the ball, one to two yards? That's one of those things you have to wonder, which, by the way, I didn't notice that. I'm going to have to go back and watch the film and see if that's the case, American Patriot. Good insight, if so. But yeah, I need, a look, I need, I need to see what, that, what he's talking about. That's one of those things you have to worry about is, is it that Jimmy Lindsay is currently unavailable for this team and you had to shuffle around and put John Janik at that defensive line spot? I don't know. That's a question you need to ask. I don't have the answer, but. I suspect it might have something to do with that. Um, Josh Ford says, this may be wrong, but I cringe when the linebackers went into coverage and left 10 to 15 yards between them and the defensive line. KJ hurt us on that. Then there was a lot of gaps. There was a lot of zone. Um, and then KJ Jefferson uh, making things happen. And um all of a sudden receivers, you know, are wide open just because plays got extended. And um, that's where he killed LSU. I mean, he had a couple of touchdowns just on that. Um, Jeremy Frank says, hey, Preston, wish me luck Friday. I'm asking my girlfriend to marry me. You know what this reminds me of? Have you ever seen the Brandon Walker show on Barstool? And he has – like callers come in, will you wish my sister a happy birthday? And then like they hit them with like a D's nuts joke or something like that. I feel like I'm about to get pranked, but <laughs> uh, erring on the side of caution that Jeremy Franks with his picture of a 90 year old man and his profile picture is a good guy. Actually. I wish you luck, Jeremy. Um, and watch me get dunked on somehow, subway in the next five minutes. Because right, he's doing he's it at uh, at Spirit Store because she loves Halloween, so that makes me think I'm, I'm even more so about to get trolled. But I'm here for it. I, I hope you have a good thing you could dunk on me for. Yeah, Eddie Whitaker. I don't know what Dwayne D is talking about. Both Ohio State and Notre Dame both looked really good, and that's why you got a 17 to 14 game. Okay. Yeah. I, it, I, I, I mean, it was like 0-0 going into halftime. So, you know, most people want to see a little more was movement. It, I mean, was ball. it a hard-fought game between two very good teams, or was it two teams 
shooting themselves in the foot. Right. I, I don't know. I, I think, you know, obviously we were glued to LSU in the press box. Right. It's one um, of those things where we, we pop in every few plays, but can't really evaluate the game. I did see Sam Hartman making some good throws. The Kyle, whatever kid for uh, Ohio state, he looks gritty, but he, he seems to be a step behind what you typically see in Ohio state quarterback, but he made that last throw to get it to the one yard line, man. That, that was gutsy. I believe it was fourth down too. So uh, I, I didn't see bad football, but I didn't watch the whole game. Guys, um, picking up some recruiting uh, info in the press box tonight. And um, put this way, this weekend's visits for both men's and women's basketball going very, very well. Um, saw the quarterback McIntyre from Brentwood, Tennessee out there. And um, they had a great group down there on the field at the uh, end of the game. Um waiting to get in the locker room. So we're going to be making a bunch of calls tomorrow on that. And, um, but uh, it, it sure looks like, first of all, Matt McMahon has a great group of every one of these guys being national high four-star kids that are in this weekend. Got his first commitment for the class of 24 yesterday. Kim Mulkey with uh, uh, the number two overall player in the country. She was number one last year. And um, I think LSU's looking very, very good there. She's going she's gonna to have the number one ranked recruiting class uh, again. Um, go ahead and mark that down. Uh, so, yeah, uh, she had Joyce Edwards in from Camden, South Carolina. I had interviewed uh, Joyce uh, probably about eight, six or seven months ago. She is big. She is awesome. Both her and her mom really love Kim Mulkey. So we're going to be reaching out to all the football and basketball recruits uh, tomorrow and Monday, and we're going to try and bring as much as you can on tigerbait.com. So go subscribe there for one dollar. We're going to try and uh, reach out to as many of those folks as you can on our YouTube channel. We've got Brian Kelly, Jaden Daniels, Ramos, uh, Brian Thomas interviews uh, on, on our channel. Uh, Preston's game stories up on tigerbait.com, and as is Brian Lazar's instant analysis. And so, uh all right, guys, thanks for all you tuning in. Anything you want to add before we head out, uh, Preston? Well, you mentioned all those recruits, not too shabby football recruits coming out tonight. You had Terry Busey and Bryce Underwood, right? Yep, and so solid Terry guys is about to make a decision, and a highly coveted athlete that uh, everybody is looking at probably is a safety. And um, I think LSU could probably put their best foot forward this weekend and see, see what happens, but um, – a lot of people have thought uh, A&M's had a, a nice lead for a while, but um, uh, that one is it was not over heading into the weekend. And uh, you could book it that uh, the LSU coaching staff is uh, putting the uh, full court press on there. Yeah, I Who's like the, it when you're addition. when you're coming from behind on a recruit and you get that last at bat before they make their decision. I I like well, that position. I will I will say I will say this. Um, when people say that LSU's been behind with him, I think a lot of that might also be some group think. It yeah, might, people just kind of going on with what others are saying. Yeah, and it, and it might not actually be where LSU is has been behind, where it's been actually closer even uh, for for a while. A while. So what we're going to see how this uh, uh, plays out, but we'll um, see. LSU needs right. that that signature commit for this year. That's for sure. They don't have a five star guy. It ain't open for, for some other guys that are out there, too, that are already committed elsewhere. Just saying. Leave that All ominously right, guys. out there. Subscribe to Tiger Bait for $1 to find out. All right, guys. Y'all have a good evening, and we'll see you on the other side. Uh, Preston, Monday night. and uh, uh, Night, y'all. See y'all so Monday. Hey, I'm going to try my best. Uh, the 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 plane girl, the those – People aren't real back there. She was at the LSU game. I'm going to try my best to get her on my show Monday night. I doubt I get her, but if not, me and Nagy will be there for y'all Monday night at 8 p.m. All right, guys. And uh, buddy Sanjay and I will be uh, Wednesday night. So, and uh, got a big Monday. We got Brian Kelly. And right after him, we get uh, Kim Mulkey. And then we get access to Kim Mulkey's first practice. So we get to see Van Lick and, and all the, all Michaela Williams. We get to see all the newcomers. So, um, I know it's football season, but uh, 
shoot uh, Matt McMahon starts practice Wednesday. And then the following week, uh, fall baseball cranks up. So we've got a lot of LSU sports coming your way. All right, guys. Good night.